Hi everybody, my name is Oscar Rojas and I am a second year PhD student in the Dr. Stein Monogastric Nutrition Laboratory and today I'm going to talk about the effects of reducing the particle size of corn on energy, phosphorus and amino acid digestibility by growing pigs. This is the outline of my presentation for today. I will start with a brief introduction about fig technologies and the importance of grinding and then I will move on to the digestibility experiments, energy, phosphorus, and amino acids, and then I will finish my presentation with some overall conclusions and the implication of this research. So why do we grind feed ingredients? Grinding of feed ingredients is used to reduce the particle size and to increase the energy and nutrient digestibility, and thereby reduce the impact of feed costs on the total cost of production. It is recommended that corn grain be milled to an average particle size of approximately 650 microns, and this is usually accomplished with the use of either roller mills, hammer mills, or now with a combination of both systems, roller mill and hammer mill. And this new system is called two-stage grinding or multi-stage grinding system, and they are used to minimize the variation in particle size and to maximize grinding efficiency. It has been reported that the digestibility of energy, dry matter, and nitrogen in core increases as particle size of corn reduce, and also it has been reported that there is an increase in the digestibility of amino acids when we reduce the particle size of soybean meal. However, we need to know that there are some problems related to the reduced particle size. One of them, is that it could be a problem with the flowability in our feeders and bends. Also, as we decrease the particle size, there are some evidence that there is an increase in the development of ulcers in the stomach. And also, there are some valid points mentioned that there is an increase in the energy cost at the feed mill as we try to reduce the particle size. However, at this point, there is no data that demonstrate the effects of particle size on the digestibility of phosphorus, the digestibility of amino acids in corn fed to growing pigs. So in this slide, we can observe how is the processing of corn to obtain different particle size. In some previous experiment in which particle size of corn has been evaluated, the greatest particle size was achieved using a roller mill, whereas the smallest particle size were obtained using a hammer mill. And by using this approach, it is not possible to distinguish between the effects of mill type, in this case roller mill and hammer mill, and the effects of changing the particle size. So in this experiment, to avoid that situation, what we decided to do was first use all the corn grain and then roller using an automatic roller mill, and then the roller grain was divided into four batches that were ground using a hammer mill with different screen size to obtain the average final particle size of 339 microns, 485 microns, 677 microns, and 865 microns. In this slide, we can observe the chemical composition of the test ingredients. So we have in the y-axis the values in percentage, and we have in the x-axis the four different particle size. The red bars represent crude protein, blue bar represent phosphorus concentration, and the green bar represent fat concentration. So we observe that as we increase the particle size, there is not a lot of difference between the concentration of crude protein in all the corn particle sizes, and we also observe the phosphorus concentration. We have that it range between 0 0.29 at 339 microns up to 0 0.34 at 677 microns. So the objective for this experiment was to determine the concentration of digestible energy and metabolizable energy, the standardized total tract digestibility of phosphorus, and the standardized ileal digestibility of amino acids in corn grain that was ground to different particle sizes and fed to growing pigs. So now let's move on to the first experiment, amino acid digestibility. For this experiment, we use 10 barrels with initial body weight of 29.2 kilograms. We have five diets 
and the experimental design was a Latin square repeated five by five with five periods and five diets, and ileal digesta samples were collected for eight hours on day six and day seven of each period. So in this slide, we can observe the ingredient composition of the experimental diets. We have corn, ground limestone, the calcium phosphate, and we also add chromic oxide and vitamin and mineral premix. We have four diets, as I mentioned before, and each of those diets contain each of the particle sizes. We also formulate a nitrogen-free diet to be able to calculate the basal endogenous loss of protein and amino acids. Here we can observe the statistical analysis of this experiment. The data were analyzed by ANOVA using the PROGMIX procedure of SAS. The fixed effect was the diet and the random effects were the peak and the replication. Now let's move on into the results for this experiment. Here we are looking at the SID of lysine. We have in the y-axis SID in percentage and we have in x-axis each of the particle sizes, and we observe here that the SID of lysine was not reduced linearly as particle size of corn increased from 339 microns to 865 microns. When we look at the SID of methionine, we observe the same pattern as the previous amino acid. There is no linear reduction as particle size increased from 339 to 865 microns. And there is the same case for SID of tronin. There is not a linear decrease of digestibility as we increase the particle size of corn. However, in the case of AID of starch, there is a decrease in the digestibility as we increase the particle size of corn from 339 to 865 microns and this is likely a result of the reduced access to star granules for alpha amylase, which reduced the star's digestibility. Also, the reduced surface area of grain that was grown to a greater particle size may be have contributed to the reduced access for enzymes. This indicates that reduction of cereal grain particle size may increase the effectiveness of star's degrading enzymes. However, the fat that the AID and SID of crude protein and amino acids were not influenced by particle size indicates that protein digesting enzymes were not hindered by the reduced surface area and greater particle size in core ground to 865 microns. Thus, it's appeared that finer grinding and greater surface area is more important for star digesting enzymes to gain access to the star granules that is for the proteases to get access to the dietary proteins. Now, let's move on to the second experiment, energy and phosphorus digestibility. For this experiment, we use 40 barrels with initial barrel weight of 22.8 kilograms. We had four treatments, 10 peaks per treatment, and feces and urine samples were collected for five days after five days of adaptation period to the diet. Here we can see the ingredient composition of the experimental diet. We have corn, ground limestone, sal, vitamin and mineral premix. And as you can see, we didn't add any source of phosphorus, so all the phosphorus is coming from corn. The data were analyzed by ANOVA using the PROGMIX procedure of SAS. The fixed effect was the diet, and the random effects were the peak and the replication. Now let's move on into the results. Here we are looking at the digestibility of gross energy. We have in the y-axis the ATTD in percentage, and we have in the x-axis each of the particle sizes. We observe the digestibility of gross energy was reduced linearly as particle size increased from 339 microns to 865 microns. When we look at the digestible energy in dry matter bases, we observe that the concentration of digestible energy also decreased linearly as we increase the particle size from 339 microns to 865 microns. And in the case of metabolizing energy, also in dry matter bases, 
we observe that there is a linear decrease as we increase the particle size. And the reason for the increase Emmy in corn ground to a smaller particle size is that the apparent ideal digestibility of stars is increased as corn particle size is reduced. In the case of digestibility of phosphorus, it did not change as particle size of corn chain, so it appears that reduction in particle size or increases in surface area are not affected in improving the phosphorus digestibility in pigs. And the reason may be that to increase phosphorus digestibility in corn, the enzyme phytase is needed, and pig has insignificant amount of endogenous phytase enzymes produced in the small intestine. So the conclusions for these two experiments are that reducing the particle size of corn from 865 microns to 399 microns linearly increase the ATTT of gross energy and the concentration of digestible energy and metabolization of energy in corn. However, there was no effect of corn particle size on STTD of phosphorus or the SID of indispensable amino acids. Thank you for your attention, and if you want to know more about swine nutrition, you can visit our website at nutrition.ensign.illinois.edu. Thank you.